All right, Victorum Gaming fans and SPQR fans, we're back, and we got another series that we're starting here for SPQR. We're going to take a look at the equipment, so both the weapons and the armor, and kind of give everybody a rundown of some of the advantages and disadvantages of each of these things. So starting off with the uh, weapons equipment. So you got a fairly decent list of different weapons here, and the chart kind of gives you the special rules for all of them. So axes, anytime you can get that, um, and a lot of the... Uh, like Gaul and German armies uh, do have access to those, but just a straight up lethal one is always nice, uh, especially when you're dealing against armies that have access to really heavy armor. So things like Romans, of course, um, being able to modify their armor save is, of course, really good. And things like cavalry and stuff, too. Clubs um, might seem like a not so good weapon, but having the smasher rule is important just because so many things in the game have a shield to shield and or swords to cause those parries. So just being able to ignore that part of it and move on straight to the armor saves uh, is good. So anytime you can force armor saves, um, that will hopefully result in casualties. Daggers seem like one of the worst possible weapons. I just don't know why anyone would actually want to spend the points on them unless you're just really strapped for points and can't afford better weapons. So um, as it says, it's typically a weapon of desperation. Um, still better than nothing, though, which is true, but not by much. So, And it's got the short special rule, which really... Um, gives you another penalty to basically hit so um yeah so really daggers i would skip those unless that is unless there is no uh, other option uh fists and feet it really is the worst short and weak so um no bonuses whatsoever there in fact just penalties so um between fists feet and dagger really um try to avoid those in all possible circumstances um but sometimes a lot of your skirmisher type units, you know, um, rather than wasting points to upgrading them with daggers just to give them a little bit of an ability in close combat, um, you know, if if those units have been charged, um, consider them lost, basically. So, um, you know, something has gone wrong if your units are, um, you know, your fists and feet units are uh, uh, have gotten into close combat. So, um, moving on. Uh, great axes, of course, those who have access to it, really cool weapon. Um, mainly, I think, uh, Germania is the list that has access to that. But um, a great axe, so you get lethal too. Always nice to modify the armor, enemy armor, that by that much. Smasher, they're not going to be parrying it. And two-handed um, simply just means you can't use your shield in close combat, but you can still use a shield if you have one uh, to deal with ranged attacks. So keep that in mind. So. Um, Two-handed just means you're going to be using both hands for the weapon in close combat. Shields can still be purchased if you have the option and to help deal with ranged. Uh, a large club, similar type of weapon, but only lethal one. So, um, but hey, um, again, Smasher uh, is such a cool ability, again, just for so many units that have shields. And lethal one is certainly better than nothing. Um, long spears and pikes really go together. Um, so there's long. So basically, if you have a longer weapon than the enemy, you get a bonus to hit. Very long just means that if you have uh, a unit of long spears versus a unit of pikes, the pikes are still longer. So the pikes will have an advantage over uh, the long spears and certainly anything else in the game. So no other special rules really with that, although pikes typically, if you... Um, have access to that those are going to be in like a phalanx unit and uh, same thing with long spears so phalanxes do give you some bonuses uh, when dealing with cavalry as well so very cool there short short spears no special rules really although if they are on cavalry you do get uh, lethal there i believe so um so something to keep in mind uh, certainly when you're charging um and yeah uh, not a bad option then the sword which is really just the most common ubiquitous uh, ubiquitous uh, weapon there so it gives you a parry um, and you know when combined with a large shield in combat that's three parries per person um, so you know your Roman legionary uh, is going to be parrying each one is going to have three parries uh, available for them in close combat so um, you know sword you cannot go wrong with that um, and even for a unit that might otherwise be weak in close combat just buying that sword is almost like buying yourself a little bit of armor if you can parry some of their incoming hits um and then lastly the two-handed sword um lethal one parry and two-handed so for those uh, armies that do get access to those um it's just a fantastic weapon um basically just a better sword um you know uh, the lethal one added there is always nice two-handed again you're not going to have a sword um for 
close, or not sword, but sorry, a shield for close combat. So uh, do keep that in mind. But again, ideally, you know, you're, you're getting the hits and uh, that lethal will hopefully result in some more uh, actual damage caused. Now, uh, it is worth mentioning, though, it's not a smasher weapon like the Great Axe and Large Club. So um, you're going to have to deal with some parries. So just keep that in mind. So um, best weapons here. Um, well, it really just depends on your army. So again, we said daggers and fists and feet. Uh, ideally, you know, um, if that's all you've got, that's all you've got. I personally don't see a reason to like upgrade into daggers unless you just really feel you need something that's better than fists and feet. But honestly, save yourself the points and just buy more units or buy more uh, for whatever unit uh, that uh, is just stuck with the fists and feet. So typically, again, your archers, skirmishers, and stuff like that. Um, uh, buying an extra body is better than wasting points on a horrible upgrade. Uh, you know, if you're really planning on having those units in combat, you might consider a different game plan. Um, again, things are probably going wrong for you if your skirmisher units are getting charged. Um, so something to consider there. Um, again, any of the two-hander weapons are really awesome. Uh, and certainly, again, you can still have shields to deal with um, incoming missile fire. But uh, smasher weapons are always great. Um, just skipping the whole parry step and moving on to damages is really cool. And again, uh, with especially with the Greek armies, um, a lot of long spears and pikes and stuff like that, Macedonians, um, you're not causing more damage per se, but um, you're going to be hitting more often. Um, so uh, in a sense, that can then help um, deal with uh, some of the units there. And again, the sword is so common that, um, again, and when, especially on heroes with um, various talents, which we've reviewed in our other videos, um, the, the parry is just a, a, a nice um, little feature and again so many units have the sword or access to swords and usually it's a fairly cheap option so something to definitely consider there um, then we move on to ranged weapons and there's basically four different ones in the game so the most common one that you're going to see across so many armies is the javelin uh, it's a 10 inch range uh, does not suffer the long range penalty um, so it's something to keep in mind and lethal to and only one shot per javelin um, obviously there's not an infinite supply the units that usually get those have access to buying more than one, and really, you know, if you have a decent um, ranged score, then uh, going all in on javelins is certainly cool. Lethal two is is pretty pretty gnarly. Um, should deal with most light to medium units, um, but even then, uh, you know, uh, taking a shot at some of the more heavily armed units and forcing some wounds is is not bad either. Um, and you can definitely buy a lot of javelins per dudes. Um, three is really the maximum, but um, also just uh, typically those units you can afford to have larger sized units. And they can definitely do some nice work there. Um, next most common really that you see is the bow. Um, no other special rules for it really, but just you know, 20 inch range is, is pretty solid. Um, putting units that have access to bows in good spots where they are either hard to get to or have some cover just to mitigate their typical lack of armor is, is a great way to go. Um, and the bow doesn't have any restrictions as far as how fast it can shoot or anything like that. So really, you can shoot twice a turn with it. Um, next, um, in some ways the best weapon, but again, a slow rate of fire, is the sling. 30-inch uh, range, so the only thing that beats that is the, uh, the scorpion for the, uh, the Romans. Um, but that's a separate uh, thing, uh, since it's really a war machine. Um, but 30-inch range, you do have to spend a special action first before you can shoot, technically, for the reload. It does have lethal 1, um, so if you do hit, you're going to force um, you know, force some uh, penalties to the armor save there. So really uh, a neat option there. And there are a lot of good sling units for the various armies, and certainly Balearic Slingers, if you're going with mercenaries, are just absolutely top-notch. And then stones, again, is almost like the... Um, you know, the dagger and fists and feet of the ranged weapons here. So just a 10 inch range, no special rules whatsoever. And again, it's not slow like the sling. So certainly you could throw twice a turn, but, um, you know, um, considering the short range, you're, you're definitely vulnerable to being charged. Um, and a lot of times, uh, unless you're strapped for points again, typically those types of units that have stones also have access to javelins or other ranged weapons. So you might just game plan for that and go with something that either at least gives you 
uh, double the range like a bow or some really cool special rules like the javelin. So that basically covers the ranged and hand-to-hand -hand, uh, weapons. So again, lots of different options, lots of different things to consider. You know, different armies have different point values for all this stuff, and same thing with heroes. But um, again, you want to go with things that ideally, um, you know, uh, have some sort of effect on the game or are at least cheap enough to where you can then buff out uh, the, the unit sizes to make up for some of the maybe lack of oomph that they, the, the weapon might have. So, um, and who knows, maybe down the road, they'll also add some other weapons or, uh, tweak some of these as well. So, um, that is basically the quick overview of that. Although I would say with pikes and long spears, um, it's a little bit, uh, unfortunate that like, especially if you form a phalanx that the rear, uh, ranks or the other ranks, of something like a pike don't actually doesn't seem like they actually contribute to the number of dice rolled because again it's just the units that are in base contact so something there ideally should change because um, there are certainly a lot of potential downsides to the phalanx and the the benefits of it um, don't necessarily um, outweigh the quantity of dice that you could roll um, and unless you're building up like a really large and wide uh, frontage uh, unit there um, some of your you might just be out diced essentially depending on what you're facing so um, but that's that's a topic for another video to get into so um, quick review of the weapons and again um, ideally again make use of what works best for your army um, and what you have available in uh, you know best quantity and things like that too so again each army is going to focus on different things your Greeks are going to be more with um, you know swords and uh, long spears uh, and slings, and uh, in some cases the bows as well. Uh, Macedonians are going to be more on the pike side just for their foot infantry. Um, any cavalry, of course, that gets long spears um, is a great option, or any spears whatsoever. And then for just about everybody else, the sword, again, is so ubiquitous. Just getting a parry is awesome. And then some of our more barbarian-like armies having the larger two-handed weapons that have lethal and smasher and stuff like that. Uh, again, just absolutely fantastic. So... And again, on the range side, uh, bows and javelins are really going to be your most common ones, although um, slings certainly have their spot, and a lot of armies do focus on those. And just having lethal 30-inch uh, range and lethal is uh, actually pretty dang cool, so that makes up for the lack of uh, rapid fire, essentially, with those. Um, so it's very easy to put slingers in a good spot, and from so far away, they can certainly um, be uh, quite the nuisance. So um, so if you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and give us a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and then we'll be back with more content.